this? What? Great place to rollerblade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a field. You can't go all the way around it because that's where the mall was. Oh. Yeah, that whole field is, is where Salem Mall used to be. The end of an era. Sears, the last remnant of the old Salem Mall in Trotwood, will soon go the way of the rest of the mall's stores. Could more have been done to save this store? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, you know, it, it's a matter of, number one, it's an issue of the corporation right now. Um, we actually spoke with Sears representatives as recently as two years ago who told us that, uh, um, you know, this store was, was a, uh, a well-performing store. Um, but they've, again, they've had some reversal of fortunes in terms of their corporation. But Trotwood City Manager Michael Lucking thinks this could be the beginning of another era. The city already has plans to put a technology business park where the Salem Mall once sat. Lucking is looking into acquiring the Sears property to add to that park. It may well become an opportunity. Trotwood once tried to turn the Salem Mall site into an open air mall called the Landmark. But now officials think the business park, which could include logistics or light manufacturing companies, is a better way to go. Welcome to the fifth edition of Dead Mall Date Night. As always, I'm your cruise director, Kristen, and in this episode, we'll be covering the Salem Mall in Trotwood, Ohio. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, where's the mall? This episode's a little different than the others we've done because this Sears building is all that's left of the mall which was demolished in 2006. The Sears you see here closed in January of 2014, and while its date to dance with the wrecking ball has not yet been set, the city of Trotwood received a federal grant in June of this year to revitalize the site, so this relic's days are numbered. A couple weeks ago, I remembered seeing commercials on TV when I was a kid for things like Gordon from Sesame Street making appearances at the Salem Mall outside Dayton, and I asked myself, whatever happened to that place? I've been to the other two malls in Dayton many times as an adult, and I'd heard nary a mention of Salem Mall, and I don't remember ever going there as a kid either, even though going to the next city over to visit a different mall was something we did from time to time. I looked it up on Google Earth and was really disappointed to discover there was no mall there, but I was simultaneously impressed and baffled that the lone survivor of the demise of any mall in the last 15 years was a Sears. In fact, at the time of its closure, Sears was the only anchor left. This video is being published only days after Sears Holdings announced that their Dayton Mall location will also close later this year, leaving the Fairfield Commons location the only one left to serve the Dayton, Ohio metro area. Is this empty building a glimpse into the future of an American icon? Come see the empty side of Sears. The Rouse Company designed the Salem Mall, which opened in 1966 with this Sears location, as well as Reich's department store a smaller department store called The Metropolitan, Liberal Supermarket, and a multi-screen cinema. It had room for 60 stores. It was the only enclosed mall in the Dayton area until Dayton Mall opened in 1970. A renovation was completed in 1981, which added an additional two-story concourse leading to a J.C. Penney and a small food court in the space previously occupied by the supermarket. A second remodel was completed when The Metropolitan left the mall a few years later to add a larger two-story food court adjacent to Center Court. This increased the inline tenant capacity to over 110. The mall was prosperous with only minimal competition throughout the 1980s, which was when I saw all those commercials for big events on TV all the way down in Cincinnati. While all the windows have been neatly boarded up, through a small knot hole in the plywood, you can still see that there are lights on inside. There are still doors, drywall, and one questions whether even the most basic of salvage work has been done yet. Thank you.
For fashion on sale, there's only one place to go, and that one place offers you a wide variety of choices. That's the Salem Mall. This Thursday through Sunday, Salem Mall's in sidewalk sale will be the fashionable place to be. You'll find everything from fancy footwear to fashionable headgear and much more. So be sure you dress up your winter wardrobe at Salem Mall's in sidewalk sale Thursday through Sunday. Salem Mall is located south of I-70 on Route 49 in Shiloh Springs Road. Salem Mall is open daily, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday, 12.30 to 5.30. Serious competition arrived for Dayton's north suburbs in 1993 when the mall at Fairfield Commons opened in Beaver Creek, but the mall held on for the first half of the 90s. In 1995, the mall still had 91 stores and employed 1,940 people. Things started to deteriorate quickly after that. In 1998, the J.C. Penney and Lazarus locations left and the smaller inline tenants began to make their mass exodus. In 2000, the former manager of Summit Park Mall in Niagara Falls, New York, Lawrence Rose, took over management of Salem Mall. He was a native of Toledo and was eager to return to Ohio to revitalize it. He described the greenery and wood-paneled mall as a really beautiful place and wanted to get down to business. But it may have been too late for anyone to reverse the misfortunes of Salem Mall, and in many ways the city of Trotwood in general. The two-story wing leading to J.C. Penney had only three tenants in it by late 2000, and the remaining stores were relocated to other areas of the mall, and the wing was shuttered, never to reopen. In 2001, the mall was placed on the market for $5 million, excluding the Sears building, as it was and still is Sears' habit to own their buildings outright. The building ultimately sold for $2.5 million to a New York-based firm who would hold the mall under the name Salem Retail LLC. The mall contained 48 stores, including the Anchors. The new owners announced that they would change the name to Renaissance Plaza. The name change and ensuing Renaissance would never come to pass. The empty Lazarus anchor was raised to the ground in 2001 and replaced with a Home Depot location that was freestanding and did not connect to the mall. In 2004, the city of Trotwood purchased the mall from its New York-based owners for $3.5 million, with the mayor at the time quoted as saying, the citizens of Trotwood deserve more than the Salem Mall offers. The city would go on to receive a $1 million federal grant in 2005 to revitalize the site. The city's first step in the revitalization process was to demolish the mall, except for the Sears, which they did not own, on May 15th of 2006. They announced that their plan was to build an open-air lifestyle center in partnership with General Growth Properties. Their new development was to be called the Landmark and would be modeled after the very successful The Green in nearby Kettering. Ground has never been broken on this development. In 2013, when the Sears Corporation announced that after seven years as a freestanding location, independent of the mall it was once attached to, they would close in January 2014, the city of Trotwood announced that they would be developing the site into a technology park. They purchased the Sears property from Sears Holdings. They have $400,000 set aside between a federal grant and city money that has been pledged for revitalization. They received this grant money in June of 2018. This video was filmed on August 24th of 2018. So, 
for a property that has sat vacant since 2014, shockingly devoid of graffiti. This should serve as sufficient deterrent to any ne'er-do-wells who would approach this building with less than honorable intentions. It's probably patrolled heavily. It's incredibly quiet for a building sitting off a main thoroughfare in a medium-sized town. It's eerie, like a tomb. It's a relic of a time gone by and far too large to put under glass in a museum. They definitely don't build them like this anymore. And we saw these um, sheds back here. And we're gonna go investigate. something. The question becomes what's in there. And uh, is there something scary in there? Please don't get tetanus. They look like they're full of hay. The chupacabras in there. Like these are not opening. Like whatever's in there is like in there. Kind of cool if we could find like some sweet ass like Salem malls. Whoa! Come see the flammable side of Sears. Oh. What? That's an old <laughs> Maybe they welded it shut. No, there wouldn't be that much flames. found someone's house. Really? Yeah, there's a couch. There's an upstairs. Yeah, I think we should get out of here. I out. think we should uh, FO like ASAP. Thank you for tagging along in this very unconventional episode of Dead Mall Date Night. We're headed to Pittsburgh next weekend for the Dead Mall Summit, so look forward to some coverage of some properties in Pittsburgh from us and other content creators of the Dead Mall community. We proudly rep the Dead Malls of Discord. Join the conversation by clicking the invite link in our description. Thank you very much to our 50 subscribers. We could not have done this without you. I am Kristen. My co-pilot's name is Ron, and we are Unicom Productions. We will see you.